Welcome to Christian Faith Ministries, where Drs. Greg and Deidre Thomas are the pastors. As we embrace the future together with so many uncertainties, we are here to help you survive and thrive during this pandemic and beyond. Join us today as we declare war on poverty and sickness. Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Thomas, and I want to welcome you once again to the teaching ministry of Christian Faith Ministry by Dr. Greg Thomas. I want you to be, praise God, I want you to go and get your Bibles right now. Uh, get your pen and your paper. Tag someone. Let them know that we're on. Subscribe. You know, hit the notification button. All of those wonderful things. Praise God. You're you going to be blessed by this series. Oh, my God. We're in the beginning of a brand new month. Hallelujah. And guess what? We have a brand new series for you. You don't want to miss. We're going to be talking about David in this series. Praise God. I could have chosen a lot of other biblical characters, but I chose David because I felt this is what God was speaking to me about. Now, I'm talking about the anointing, and the theme for this series is anointed for God's purpose. Oh my goodness gracious. You know, do you realize that you've been created by God? You, he is the manufacturer. And so therefore, praise God, if God has anointed you, God, praise God, has anointed you for his purpose. Oh my God. And that's the theme throughout this series. You know, people need to realize in today's society, especially, glory to God, if you're finding yourself, praise God, hitting a roadblock or you keep getting knocked down and you can't seem to find your way, maybe you need to re-examine your purpose. You know, so often we think about ourselves, but what about God? What about your manufacturer? What about what did he create you for? You find, it, and I'll continue to teach this, that and we know that all things will work together for good, for those who, here it is, number one, love God, you love God, and those who are what? Called <laughs> according to what his purpose and that's exactly what we're going to be teaching now father i thank you for the teaching priest that it comes alive with revelation knowledge that those were here they would hear with ears that's been anointed god i thank you father hallelujah as they receive the engrafted word of god it will change their perspective that they will change their life and change the course of their destiny oh my god in jesus name Amen. Well, praise God. You know, when I study this series, you know, I find that there's so many Bible characters that I could have talked about today, or even through this series, you know, so, uh, characters like like Elijah or Elijah or or Moses or Samson or or Joseph or Samuel. And but God said, no, teach about David, you know, and in this series we will focus on David. And I'm choosing David because he was one of the most, praise God, uh, well known of all of God's leaders. I would think next to uh, Joseph. I love Joseph and David. Those are two of my favorite characters. And then Moses comes third, even though I know that God uh, called me to say, I've called you as a Moses to go into my people to let, tell my people, let, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. That was what God told me when he called me. Amen. And so he said he, he'll call me with, with the, a Moses anointing. Oh, hallelujah. But praise God. I love those biblical characters, you know, because they were called for the purpose of God and they fulfill their purpose. Now, as Christians, there are so many things that comes to disrupt or things that we encounter that will attempt to disqualify us or disqualify you to, to give up, you know, to give up your purpose, to give up what God has called you to do. See, what they're trying to do is what those challenges that you're facing with, uh, it, what it's trying to do is to get you to give up on your purpose. It's called the value that's in you, you know, and, and the value that's in you is the purpose of God to fulfill the mission calling of what God has called you to do. That's a lot of words, but I think you get it. Now, Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that all things will work together for good for those that love the Lord and to those who are called, what? 
unto his purpose. Now, if you are trying to achieve anything, whether it's uh, parenting or working a nine to five job or being an entrepreneur or trying to run a nonprofit foundation, sometimes it gets hard in the marketplace. Sometimes it's difficult to find balance, especially when you know that you know, praise God, that God has called you to do what you need to be doing. But sometimes it's difficult trying to find good help even, but uh, which, which, which will oftentimes cause you, praise God, got to start trying to do it in your own strength instead of waiting on God. Sometimes, you know, we get ahead of God and we don't wait on God to continue to speak to us as I shared with you last week. Well, today we're going to learn on some of the things that David, praise God, had to do when he was anointed. Now, Psalms 92.10, it lets us know you cannot exist on yesterday's anointing. Look what Psalms 92, let's pick it up with verse 10. Turn your Bibles to it. It says, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Now, we need the anointing of God so that we can refresh so we can be restored and, and we can renew our focus and our vision doing difficult times. When you have been anointed, the anointing is what God gives you to break the yoke. It will break every yoke. Let's look at the Hebrew meaning for the word anoint. The word anoint in the Hebrew means, and I love this, it means Messiah. <laughs> See, the Messiah is the anointed one. That means that you can't have the anointing unless the Messiah is indwelling inside of you. Hallelujah. And you understand if he has come to live in you, then now you are no longer your own. Praise God. He is the Lord of your life. Hallelujah. In the New Testament, the Greek word for the anoint or anointing is uh, crystal or shy, uh, uh, crystal or cre, cre, creo, C H R I O. Now, <laughs> The word uh, creo and crystal, they, 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 they mean the same thing. It's the smearing or rubbing of oil or perfume upon an individual in order to consecrate that individual for office or for religious services. So as an example, look at Exodus 28, 41, when it says, and thou shall put them upon Aaron, my, thy brother, and his sons with him, and shall anoint them and consecrate them and sanctify them that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Do you see that? They were anointed to be priests. Now, in Bible times, people anointed with oil uh, to signify God's blessings or the call of God upon that person's life. Now, sometimes people were anointed for special purposes, such as to be a king or to be a prophet. Some were even anointed as builders. Exodus 29 and 7 says, Then thou shalt take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. They were also anointed whenever someone was sick. Are you listening to me? We see that in the New Testament in James chapter 5, 14, when it says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Now, during biblical times, shepherds would be seen, praise God, anointing their sheep. Now, some theologians have said that the original purpose of the anointing came from the, the practice of the shepherds anointing their sheep. Now, they would be seen anointing their sheep to prevent lice and other insects from getting into the sheep's wool. Oh, my God. And they would also anoint their sheep's head with oil. Now, they would do this to prevent the insects from boring into the sheep's ear because it could eventually kill the sheep. This lets you know that you got to be careful of what you listen to and who you're listening to because the things that you listen to and the people that you're listening to can destroy you. <laughs> oh my God. So you got to be careful because what we 
think. Uh, what, what we listen to, it affects what we think. What we think will be affected by what we do. Our lifestyle, those things become programmed. You become programmed like a puppet on a string. And praise God, because you heard it. That's why I always start this service by saying, or this broadcast by saying, uh, anointing God, anoint the ears of the hearer so that we're, they would be able to receive revelation knowledge. Because you've got to be able to hear what, and you get revelation knowledge is when God himself reveals praise God, the word of God to you. Hallelujah. So it's important that you be careful what you're listening to so they would anoint the ears of the sheep. Uh, oh my God, hallelujah. They would do this to prevent the insects from boring into the sheep's ear. Oh, because he, they understood the value that was in that sheep wool. Lice and other insects infested sheep would cause the sheep to begin uh, as they got into the burrows of their, of their coats. Uh, they would begin biting at themselves and began rubbing against anything available. What are you saying, Dr. Greg? Just like a many, a many of you listening to me right now, because of what you've listened to, you've been told that you'll never amount to anything. You've been told that you're no good, just like you're no good for nothing, Father, that you don't even know because he didn't raise you. Glory to God. And praise God, you've been taught all kinds of negative lifestyles and you've been telling yourself that you're too dumb, you're too stupid but you never mount to anything. You begin to tell yourself that you'll never, oh my, get married. You'll never be able to get out of debt. You'll never become a homeowner. You'll never become an entrepreneur. Oh, shut up, glory to God. Stop listening to those things. But if you don't stop listening, glory to God, it will decrease the value that's on the inside of you. You need to know what God says about you. I come to tell you today that you've been fearfully and wonderfully made. Hallelujah. Oh my, God, you got purpose on the inside of you. And it's God created you, praise God, because he can only demonstrate, praise God, uh, his life to another person, praise God. The greatest way he can do it is through you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So they would, they so, so he would anoint them so that they could, oh my God, protect the, the fleet of the sheep. Uh, they didn't want the sheep to begin tearing uh, the sheep's wool and the staple in the sheep's wool. If the sheep were not protected from the lice and the other insects, it would directly decrease the economic value of the sheep. So the shepherds would pour oil on the sheep's head. This made the wool slippery. Can you hear me? Can you picture this with me? Making it impossible, brothers and sisters, for the insects to get near the sheep's ear because the earl would cause the praise God, the insects to just slide off. Hallelujah. When your ears have been anointed, uh, when you know who you are, glory to God, you're not going to listen to the deception of the enemy. You're not going to listen to the lies of the enemy, no matter who it comes from, even if it comes from yourself. See, the anointing became symbolic of healings and blessings and protection and empowerment. So as believers, we also are as Cheap, uh, then we need the anointing to protect our ear gate. Can we say amen? Which is Praise God, our thought life to, uh, uh, to to protect our ears from receiving any negative messages from our past. Praise God, or our present or even our future. We need the anointing. Uh, come on, talk to me right now of God uh, to cause, uh, oh my God, those things that would want to attach itself to us. Glory to God. That, that would want to devalue you. Glory to God. Oh, all those things that just began sliding off. Uh, oh, when I was growing up, we learned a little thing that uh, when the enemy, you know, bullies would come and they would say things to you. And, they, and and I learned to say sticks and stones may break my bones, but your words will never hurt. Uh, but I come to find out as I got a little wiser that the words that others speak, praise God, can hurt you. Sometimes those words haunt you, glory to God, even into your adult years and can even 
even take you to your grave because there are, t there are things that people say about you that can hurt and demoralize you and stop you from, from being and fulfilling the purpose and plan of God for your life. But you got to wake up and shake yourself and shake those lights off of you. Glory to God, you got to ask God to, oh my God, to, to anoint me. Yes, when you get born again, you have the Messiah comes, but there are times in your life you need to just set aside some time to get in the presence of God and say, God, I need a fresh anointing. Oh my God. And we're going to tell you how to get that later on. So if you've been anointed, it should give you the confidence. Come on, write it down to know that you've been anointed. And the power of the anointing is enough power that will drown every negative word, break every yoke and destroy every yoke and circumstance or situation that would attempt to disrupt your life or discourage you, oh my God, or afflict you. The Bible even says that many are the afflictions of the righteous. Those that will hear what is the right word of God, which is the gospel, the gospel of peace, hallelujah, the gospel of hope, the gospel of deliverance, the gospel of healing. Oh, you don't hear me. Oh, God wants to use you, glory to God. So let's give God some praise and give him thanks for the anointing. So let's look at some of the benefits of being anointed with fresh oil. Oh my God, I got about 15 minutes left. Listen to me. Psalms 92, verse 10 through 15, it's where I'm going to be teaching from. So you can find your word, a word in your, your, your Bible and, and turn to it. Now it says, first of all, first of all, the first benefit of the anointing is in Psalms 92, verse 10, reading from the Amplified Version. And it, it means, praise God, what, it, what we learn here is that Hallelujah, the anointing will give us excessive strength and, oh my God, and a stately grace. Oh my God. And you have, in other words, you have exalted, it says, you have exalted us like a wow, that of a wow ox. I, 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 I give you, praise God, God gives us supernatural. That means that I am anointed with fresh oil and the anointing will go, give me supernatural strength. See, that strength of an ox is strong. It's supernatural. Glory to God that God created that ox that way. God is saying that he'll give you that kind of strength to overcome all kind of barriers. And you know that it's not, oh, you're the strength that you got, that you manufactured, but it's the supernatural. It's when God takes the natural and make it super. Oh my God, where you once were weak, uh, you become strong. Oh my God, when you would run away and hide from situations, you'll begin to stand. Now, why? Because of the anointing. Here's the second benefit of the anointing. In Psalms 92, verse 11a says, my eye looks upon those who lie in wait for me. Talking about your enemies now, you will gain greater ability to see and to remain Focus with a greater vision to see the enemies of your success. God will show you the plans and even show you the strategies of your enemies and those who would plot up against you. Everybody that smile in your face, they might be stabbing you in the back. Everybody that's tell you that I love you, they don't even know what it means to love. I found, praise God, as I, praise God, made 72 years old this year, I found that people, glory to God, they don't know. They say they love you, but they don't know what love is. They just use it as a figment of speech. They haven't been time to learn what true love is. I don't say I love somebody just to say I love them. There's different types of love that I'm going to teach in another series. Here's goal number three. Look, in the third benefit of Psalms 92, verse 11b says, my ear hear. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Did I teach that? Yeah. I talked about the enemy. Here's number four. Here's number four. The enemy don't want you to get this one. Listen, listen. 92 verse 12 says, righteous, righteous, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. That's so powerful. I studied that and I, I spent a little time there. Praise God. And I found that the anointing will cause you to prosper like never before. All because you have decided to live for Jesus, presenting your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Jesus is the anointed, the Messiah. He lives in you. He promises us that if you seek him first and all of his righteousness, then all these things shall be added unto you. Now look, Proverbs 13, 21 says, 
Trouble pursues the sinner, but here it is, the righteous are rewarded with good things. That means that if I seek righteousness, First in my life that praise God, God is saying that I'm going to be rewarded with good things. So don't be hating on me. Oh, tell your neighbor, don't hate on me. Praise God. Just get in the boat and start living the life that God wants you to live. Look what number five. I love this because it goes and it, it just keeps going, getting better and better. And the fifth benefit, Psalms 92 verse 12b, 13 says, he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. I like that. Why? Because because look, those, he says, those, praise God, who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. That means that those Christians that are committed and not giving up, not serving God today and serving the devil tomorrow, those who are committed to the house of the Lord, my, what house are you a part of? Huh? There's a whole movement today for young people, especially where they are they use the word that God in vain. They'll say, I love God and just talk about Jesus. And then they're cussing like a sailor the next moment. I'm here to tell you that's because you're not committed to the house of the Lord. I know that the church is not perfect, but you go to the hospital when you get sick and you got a whole bunch of folks in there ain't perfect. You go to the grocery store when you get hungry and they got a lot of people waiting on you. Ain't praise God who you buying the food from. They're not perfect, but when it comes down to the man or woman of God, uh, he's got to be the perfect creature. Yes, we have to do the right thing, but God is still working on them. Oh, my goodness gracious, they are not perfect. God is still working on them as he's working on you. And many of them have come from places where you've been. They can help you get to the next place. We need each other. Oh my God, but look at Psalms 24, one and two. It says, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So when he says, he shall grow like a seed in Lebanon and those who are planted a house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Psalms 24, 1 and 2, it lets us know what are the courts of God. He said, it all belongs to me. Everything, even the cattle on a thousand hills belong to me. Everything, the earth, the firmament, the sea, everything, the bees, the birds, the trees, everything belongs to God. He says, you're going to flourish. He owns it all. You will grow up and mature in the things of the world and in the things of God. You will no longer be like a weak, praise God, brittle reed full of fear when the Storms of life comes. You will no longer be as a flaky reed. You will mature as a tree. And he gives the example of the tree, uh, of the cedar tree in Lebanon. I began looking at that tree, that tree. I said, God, what? Tell me something about the tree. And this is what God began telling me. He says, cedar trees of Lebanon. They were symbolic of holiness, spiritual maturity, longevity, and peace. Oh, my God. Do you see that? When he talks about flourishing, you're going to have a long life on the face of this earth. The cedar tree of Lebanon was symbolic of, of those things. And also the leaves uh, and the pine cones and, and the pollen that would come from the pine were, were full of medicinal opportunities to be healed. Oh my God, how even the wood, the bulk of the tree provided and, uh, antiseptic and expectants to disinfect it and, and, and the respiratory tract. Medicinal uses is cured the common cold like the flu and coughs and fever. And it improves, hallelujah, the digestive system. It helps with insomnia, diabetes, inflammation, and detoxification. Oh, my God. When God says you're going to flourish, not just in your wealth, uh, your finances, but also in your health. Hallelujah. Here's number six. Psalms, praise God. Uh, six. Psalms 92 verse 14 says, they shall still bear fruit in old age. You will still be bearing the fruit of the spirit as you mature as an elder. <laughs> oh my God, when you get older, glory to God, God says, I'm going to give you more wisdom. When you get older, God says that you, you'll be able to walk out the fruit of the spirit. That's the character of the believer. That's the character of Christ. You go to the fruit of the spirit. There's nine fruit of the spirit. And praise God, you say, God, uh, it's not just one. You can't pick, you can go to the produce section and you pick an apple because that's what you want. You pick 
different types of apples and you choose that way, a Fuji apple or, 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 or whatever, a green apple. No, 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 no. You cannot choose. It's the fruit of the spirit. And there's nine characteristics of that one fruit. It's like a passion fruit. Are oh, you listening to me? Hallelujah. We find that in Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. Uh, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Here's number seven. Psalms 92 verse 14b says, they shall be fresh and flourishing. That means that you're going to be fresh, meaning you will always remain full of humility. Uh, no matter how rich you become, no matter how prosperous or successful you may become, you will remain teachable. You're always ready to learn, understanding that, praise God, everything every precept, every word that flows from the throne room of God, God can give you a new revelation from day to day and you got to be slaughtered to get the revelation. Oh my God, you got to go through something to get an understanding. So don't get so caught up in yourself and pride because of where you are, what you know, what you knew yesterday. Get ready for God to do something else and it takes humility. Here's number eight. Praise God. Psalms 92 verse 15 says to declare... <clears throat> that the Lord is upright, hallelujah, that he is your rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. That means that after you've gone through a few things, the anointing will cause you to be a living testimony. <laughs> your testimony will always be the one that says that God is good. Even before you open your mouth, people will say, praise God, I can tell you are a believer. Oh, when you open your mouth and people begin to see where you come from, they know that it's only God that it could have brought you to this place for such a time as this. Glory to God. So I want you to understand as I come to, to close uh, what David said in Psalms 23 and 5. He said, God prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anointed my my head with oil and my cup run it over, meaning I'm running over with blessings and the favor of the Lord. I want you to know that God wants you to praise God to be anointed, to pra praise God. And he wants that anointing God to, to flow from your head to your toe. He wants when people see you, they know who's Lord of your life. Hallelujah. I pray you got something out of this. Glory to God. I have so much more I would like to be able to share, but let's, let's end it with prayer. Oh God, dear God, Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for anointing me. Come on, say it. Ah, uh, for anointing me with purpose. Because you have anointed me, I know without a shadow of a doubt that I can overcome any circumstance that I may encounter. You have anointed me with the wisdom and the strength, praise God, to stand and not throw in the towel. Thank you, Father, for anointing my head and my eyes and my ears with fresh oil, glory to God, to protect me from every negative assault of the enemy. You have anointed me with fresh oil to protect the purpose, which is the value that's in me. In Jesus' name, amen. I got to go. I pray you got something out of this. And until next time, remember that the spirit of greatness is upon you. The seed of greatness lives within you. Come on, go forth and do something great in somebody else's life. I'll see you again next time. You've been listening to Christian Faith Ministries broadcast, where doctors Greg and Deidre Thomas are the pastors. If you've been blessed and desire to give, you need prayer, or simply want more information about upcoming events or training, go to cfmnola.org. Welcome to the IMLACA Basic Boot Camp. You may be asking the question, what does IMLACA stand for? IMLACA is the abbreviation for International Marketplace Leaders and Chaplaincy Academy. The purpose of launching IMLACA is because the world as we've known it is changing rapidly daily. When the coronavirus pandemic hit in 2019, the entire world shifted from an industrial way of doing things in the marketplace to a digital way. However, one thing that has not changed and will never change is people are suffering and the need for marketplace ministry leaders in business, government, and the church that are equipped, 
trained and released as ordained men and women of God as chaplains around the world. This academy was created with you in mind. Yes, you. You've always wanted to be used by God, to be a servant leader in the marketplace, to pray for the sick, perform weddings, christenings, officiate over funerals, and much more. I believe our God has handpicked you for the IMLACA. This course is online, open book, self-paced, self-study, and self-test. Upon completion, you will participate and receive the following. One, Certificate of Completion. Two, you'll participate in an online or in-person ordination and graduation ceremony. By that time, you'll receive your ordination and graduation certificates, signet ring, chaplaincy badge, and lapel pin, digitally or by express mail.